think there are a lot of people in the Arab world who see Mark Zuckerberg as a hero, who can't imagine life without Facebook. And you see it work in a number of ways. A lot of pages in Arabic that are out there now, a lot of signals I get from people that Facebook has replaced the blog, that Twitter has become part of that equation, and they often link their Twitter feeds and their Facebook pages, uh, and that people just feel like they want to reach out to the rest of the world. Facebook lets them do that. And where there hasn't been freedom of assembly in some of these countries in the Arab world, you are free to assemble on Facebook. You can find people of your interest group, whether it's skateboarding or overthrowing a government. Sand monkey, is he the hero of the Arab peoples? No, I think the Arab people are the hero of the Arab people. I think Mark Zuckerberg created uh, Facebook and other people created Twitter and other people created blogs and Arab people used them because there were no other means of communication or debate in their society. But uh, currently right now, because there's so much hype on the idea that this was a Facebook revolution or this was a social media revolution, Yes, there is a lot of focus on him. And God knows there is a guy in Egypt who believed it and named his daughter Facebook four days ago, and the sad, sad girl. But uh, we appreciate, let's just put it this way, we appreciate the existence of social media networks that have made our lives a lot easier in doing what we're doing now. Dr. Mohammed, from a scientific point of view. <clears throat> First, I would like to say that, uh, no, for sure he's not. The, 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 the cyber dissident and political activist in, um, in Egypt were using the all social platforms before the before the creation of uh, of, of Facebook. Kalachnikov, he is the man who invented Kalachnikov, but the hero, the one who is fighting with it. So the creator of Facebook, okay, he's not the hero. Okay, he's maybe the smart man that who created, who came up with this idea. But the heroes, the real heroes, who are using Facebook and who really erupted this revolution either in Tunis or Egypt or in Libya now. But isn't it... Um, Do you think he's happy about it? Well, this is another question. <laughs> I'm sure we'll probably happy. ask him. I think he, he, he might be very surprised about, about, about the effect of his, of his creation. Business-wise, he's certainly happy. But the, the, the question is, do people attribute too much power to the social media? And because, well, uh, in the first week uh, in, in Tunisia, I went to Tunisia the night after Ben Ali had left Tunis. And they were walking around on the street and they were just saying, it, Facebook made this revolution. And they were absolutely convinced. Is, is this just because they didn't understand what else had happened? Well, no, boss, listen, uh, they're fantastic tools. Facebook is fantastic for organizing. Twitter is fantastic for sending you instantaneous updates. You know, blogs and other forms of writing are fantastic to inspire people, get them going, even spark debate. But the reality of it is, if you don't have the willing spirit and the person who's willing actually take this into heart and step out and do this thing and risk it all, the same way those people on 25th of January did, the same way that the people who went on 28th of January did, the same way people in Tunisia did, and the same way those heroes in Libya are doing right now, who are just being gunned down, it's completely I mean, useless and ineffective. Uh, the beautiful thing about the Egyptian revolution was that it was a revolution of individuals. We put, you know, we put the demands online and everybody, and they're not ideological, everybody could agree with them. And uh, people went in as individuals, they saw them and they agreed with them and they all went down. So it was a revolution of what, like 5 million people, 10 million people who are all individualistically went down. They didn't follow a leader, didn't follow anything, they just followed very simple demands, very simple roadmap. And Social media allowed this to happen because, let's face it, regular media cannot do this kind of advocacy. When we say social media, I would like to say it's not the Facebook. So social media are, by extent, by definition, are the social applications of social, of social software on, uh, on, on the media, which means we have, we have for instance, uh, blogging platforms. We have uh, Twitter. Twitter is not a social media at all. Uh, it's, not a, it's not a social, web, uh, uh, social website. Uh, we have... Um, mm, um, How do you figure that? Pardon? How do you figure Twitter is on social website? Explain that, um, like, for, for, for so, the amateurs. Uh, why, uh, why Twitter, Twitter according to the website, if you go, if you browse the website of Twitter, the official website, it's a micro-blogging platform. So it's... Yeah, but yeah. here's the thing. Uh, Facebook, and I explain this to other people, Facebook is a place where you meet people that you already know. Twitter is where you meet people that you like how they think. 
you know, it's a very interesting social networking in that sense because it's social networking of the minds and taste what? as opposed to like who you meet. Yeah. But, but the, there's ahead. also one thing, the YouTube. So the, the YouTubeication of the, of the political communication is I think from my understanding is more important than Facebook mm -hmm. because people now are affected by the, by, the, by the images, not by the messages Absolutely that Facebook. True. True. Well, uh, as we are witnessing the uh, wind of change, let's also have our own wind of change about the definitions. Uh, Arabs always famous for wasting times about definitions. This is, we call this or we call this. So regardless, it's social network, social whatever, but it's a very important tool for what is going on in the Arab world now. But why, like uh, Facebook, in my opinion, uh, maybe it's uh, dominant on any other social uh, network, maybe because it's very, I mean, easy to use, and it has lots of applications. It allows you to do so many things, unlike uh, Twitter. Twitter, for example, you are allowed to write just a few words. So if you want to put any kind of uh, statement, which is like three, four lines, you cannot do it on Twitter. But Twitter is good. It makes you give the news also, like, uh, you know, in, in a few seconds. People, they would know what's going on. Well, you, so you, you read the tweets, but you, you, you also tweet. Of course, um, you can you, tweet, but you write something, hand, I can tweet what you said. But you're an also old school journalist at the same time, I mean, you have a... No, no, um, we're not old school. So what is, what is... <laughs> you know why we're Don't not old school? What is, what is, what, what exactly? Old school, old school, that always you start with what president did, what president said, what, you know? Okay, so we're old school, not old school. Old school. You, it's fine to see, to have spectators in Morocco or, or in, in the mm. Gulf or Europe, but what you want to have is people who actually have the potential to go to the street and to stand on Tahrir. Uh, did these people, uh, Mahmoud, uh, get their information through the mainstream media, through Al Jazeera, or through whatever they were watching, and did this encourage them to go and demonstrate, or was it you?